Hey guys, today we are going to check out a custom Thunderbolt 3 external storage solution. You can use this with any compatible computer, but I'm going to specifically use this for my M1 iMac, which has yet to arrive, but no problem, I have the new M1 MacBook Air to test it with. We all know that Apple charges a crazy premium to upgrade their storage, so I'm going to solve this myself. However, I did have to give in for the memory because there's no way for you to upgrade that yourself and you can't just download more RAM. Can you? So I'm making this video because I realized that there is not much coverage for external solutions that is Thunderbolt 3 compatible. And when it comes to pairing the right drive to the right enclosure, it can get quite confusing. Even I am gambling with my own money here. If you buy the wrong part, you might severely degrade the performance, meaning you won't get your money's worth. With that being said, using an M.2 NVMe SSD externally, you will definitely get nowhere close to the advertised speeds. We know that. But for most of the cases, it'll be fast enough to get the job done. In this setup, we will be using the Silicon Power A80 NVMe M.2 Gen 3 SSD and the Orico Tom 2T3 G40 Thunderbolt 3 enclosure. I'm mainly using the external storage for editing my videos and not for long-term storage. So 512 gigabytes is more than enough. Once I'm done with my projects, I'll move them to an external hard disk for long-term storage. We'll do some speed and render tests later. Now let's have a closer look at the items. So let's start with storage. As mentioned, this is the Silicon Power A80 in 512 gigabytes. This is the enclosure of my choice. It is the Orico Tom 2T3 G40. So obviously it's Thunderbolt 3. There's a transparent shell, which I'm really liking. In fact, this black color heatsink comes in four other colors, including this black. Let's take a look inside. Ooh, right smack in the middle is the enclosure. Let's put this aside. Let's see what else is inside. We have a very short Thunderbolt 3 cable and this is the thermal pad. This is the screw for your drive. What is this? A screwdriver. And these are just some paperwork. All right, I've tidied up a bit and now let's set things up. There's three screws here, but I think two of this is for the heatsink and only the middle one is oh there's another two here for the heatsink as well and this is the one to open up the enclosure okay so you slide it off i was trying to pull it apart all right i heard it go in okay that's tight the thermal pad this is extremely important because you want this to contact this so that heat can dissipate Press it down firmly. Just before I close things up, I just want to see, is the contact, is there a good contact between the thermal pad and the heat sink? Hmm, it looks like it's just barely touching, but it's still not fully covered by the, you see? There's still a bit of a gap. I'm not sure if that's going to present any problems and I don't think I can push it any further in front because then that's going to be touching this controller. Um, this is as far as I can push it forward before it just before it just doesn't contact anything else. Let's not make this simple installation too long and let's just close it back up. All right, everything looks okay. Nothing's shaking. So that's pretty much it for the installation. Very simple. Just a bit of concern about the thermal pad not fully touching the heatsink, but I think for my use it should be okay. Now let's get back to the main video. Orico has a handful of other Thunderbolt 3 enclosures, but since I'm only using this for editing and for short periods of time, I went for the cheapest option. Another reason I chose this model is because there's not much coverage on it online. In terms of speed, it should be the same across their range because all of them are using the same JHL6340 controller. It's just a difference in design and the heat dissipation setup. If you're going to have this external enclosure always connected and under heavy use, you might want to consider the more expensive enclosures. 
It's bigger with better heat dissipation which will allow the drive to perform better and prevent any long-term damage. My MacBook Air had no problems recognizing this device. It is really just plug and play. However, you might want to reformat it into your desired settings. Let's run the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. Keep in mind that the advertised read speed of the SSD is 3400 MB and the write speed is 3000 MB per second, I think. Yes, I got it right. I got it right. For comparison's sake, I'll also include the results from the M1 MacBook Air internal storage. So there's quite a bit of difference, especially in the write speeds, but that is to be expected. By the way, while running the speed test, the heatsink was insanely hot. I guess that shows that the heatsink is working, but please take this as a reminder to get an enclosure with proper heat dissipation. Now let me load up a simple project on both drives. It's a 6.5 minute 1080p project with both 4K and 1080p video with filters and titles. We will start with the internal drive. Fast forward and we have a time of 46 seconds. That's amazing considering the project is over 6 minutes long. Gone are the days where the renders are longer than the project timeline. Now let's load the same project in the external drive. Fast forward again and we have 52 seconds. Not bad at all, it's only 6 seconds longer. Yes, you heard me right, only 6 seconds longer. In an ideal world, I would have just upgraded the internal storage of my M1 iMac, but the price is just insane. With the custom external storage solution, I can upgrade all the way to 2TB and it will still be cheaper than Apple's 1TB option. Sure, it's a fraction slower, but would the average user even notice the difference? I don't think so. Definitely not for me. Another advantage of this solution is that I can bring my project files with me wherever I go. It's a relatively compact and fast enclosure and those external SSDs out there don't come anywhere close to the speed of this setup. Plus, the new M1 MacBook Air is extremely capable for video editing. These two combinations are a match made in heaven for someone like me. So that's it for this video. I hope I helped you guys make a more informed decision on your Thunderbolt 3 external storage solution. To me, this is a fantastic solution because it checks all the boxes for my concerns. Great value, good performance, extremely portable, and easily upgradable. I just wish that for the price that I paid for the enclosure, they would have at least provided a hard shell case. Anyway, if you guys have any questions, drop me a comment. I'll include links to all the products I use today in the description box below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys for the next video. Bye.